Okay, it's January 18th. It's about 9.30, 10 o'clock. I'm on Rose Valley Lake. You see where the snow isn't right there? It's all slush, you fall right through, about four inches. Wet, there's three inches of water under it. So I'm trying to stay on the snow. Oh, we'll do some fishing, see what's going on. Got my smitty sled all rigged up and it, it went right across the top of the snow pretty good. Later. Okay, today's best time is 11.41 to 1.41 and 5.52 p.m. to 6.52. We'll see what happens. Cool. Uh, I'm officially fishing now. I got, didn't get my jigging rod yet because the wind blew so hard. Tipped my shanty over because I, I didn't have a tie down in the back, only on the sides. It's one thing about these clams is they don't, they only give you one outside loop for a tie down. That's stupid. Uh, you gotta have one on each side. Get with it, clam. Down there, it's taking my drag like crazy here. <laughs> <laughs> I got to tighten it. I whoops, I went the wrong way. I got to tighten it up. I can't get him. I can't get him. I can't get him. Yeah, I got a bass. I got a nice bass. Hey. There's a nice bass, huh? Is it, are you what's been playing down there? Goodbye. <laughs> Look at that nice bass. I guess I'll just put you back down there. Remember the other day I... Remember the other day I used the same waxworm and caught three bass at Schick's Pond? Time to check the minis. They've been down here for a while. Well, the holes aren't freezing up today because of that snow build up on the top. Maybe. Yeah, he's alive. He's alive. But that bass, he took that. He took that uh, jig, it was right on the bottom there, real close to the bottom, he took it. I got a big minnow on that first tip up up there. This mini didn't look too good after that fish took it. He's good. But see, I got a lot of weed on him. Yeah. I 
I'm gonna go 16 on this just to see what happens. Bring it up the up in the weeds a little more. It's so weedy here that I don't know where to set my bait. That's weird, this hole froze up a little. Hmm. Not much, but and nothing wrong with these minis fishy. Why aren't you eating? Hmm. This is the big minnow. And uh, look at that beautiful guy. Why wouldn't a shark or something want that? Oh. I'm going to come up further yet. Just to. I just don't know where to. Put them right now. Yeah, it's sloppy today. Sloppy, sloppy, sloppy. Sloppy, sloppy, sloppy. Nothing there. should hit because I got my coffee so it usually works <clears throat> maybe I didn't have my camera on I gotta shovel snow when I get home and my mom's house, my brother's sick, so I gotta shovel, at least shovel her car off and shovel a path to her car, but she says she's not going anywhere. She's in the mid eighties and she doesn't like driving in this stuff. And then in here I took my my chair out, my other seat, and left it in the truck and put everything in the back of my shanty so the skis would float up on the snow a little better and that did work nice but I really miss my 
I got all kinds of fish hitting there now. <laughs> There's fish down there if they're not hitting it. <laughs> it hit it earlier and I missed it. So, I stopped yesterday to shovel and on my way home, but I was so whooped from shoveling all the decks off at Annie's and the snow, it started raining on it before I got there yesterday morning and it was heavy. You couldn't shovel it, a lot, shovel it off the deck like we usually do. We had to pick it up and throw it over the railing. I think I need a new waxy. So I walked to the shed, no shovel. I looked down the porch, no shovel. So I went home. She called me a little while later wondering who was in her yard and walking around. I said it was me. So she's supposed to put the shovel on the front porch I told her I'd do it today if I'm going ice fishing but on the way home I'll stop and shovel I'm not doing a lot I'm just shoveling a path to her car and or cleaning her car off and she doesn't like the drive of this stuff she said she's not going anywhere She's turning into a junk food addict. Always wants somebody to go McDonald's or Kentucky Fried Chicken. She made potato soup yesterday. She said that would last her for two days, so she's good to go. She fell and broke her finger and she's got such bad arthritis in her hands that she can't hardly do anything. Especially with this broken finger. She's had to have metal put in it, pinned in it, and not having a good time. got any bites here so far was when it's just dead sticking and they don't they didn't seem to want it moving at all they're supposed to be biting till one o'clock so they better hurry up I didn't get skunked but I sure aren't getting many flags mm. I wanted to get out deeper out in the deeper part of the lake from here but yeah, it was a hard walk through this and it's four inches or three inches of slush underneath the snow water under it my boots are soaked already not inside but the outside well, i said i'm stopping right here i just at least i'm fishing but not where i want to be not in my usual perch honey hole Then I wasn't happy this morning. Well, I was looking on YouTube for new ice fishing videos, and I'm so fed up with them because I don't know about you guys, but when you have a similar to an RV, an ice house they call them, and you go out and put them on the lake, and you have electric, and you have wood burning stoves in them and you have a sofa and stove and TV when you can fish through a hole in the floor from your sofa and that seems to be the rage now everybody's doing these ice houses 
on the big lakes, you know, up in Canada and Minnesota, Wisconsin. They're, uh, that's not fishing. That's not country boy fishing. I'm country boy, you know. The day I can't haul my shanty out, my little pop over here, and fish with a little bit of chill, a little bit of cold, is a day I say, yes, I'm too old. Give it up. That's what I'm doing. I don't know. It's just like all oh, the videos are just in there. They're all such professionally filmed and videoed and I don't know. One thing I refuse to do is go fishing for three or four days and put all the fish catches in and tell people that I went fishing one day and caught all those fish, you know. It's, and that does happen. Well, look at me, how many fish I got. Yeah, well, we got a flag now. Because I'm ranting. My videos is just me fishing. If you don't want to watch them, don't watch them. And if you like them, then you like them. And Very little editing. Fact is, all I do is cut some of the boring parts out. If I don't catch a fish, if I say I don't catch a fish. If I catch some, you see them. And that's the only way I do it. Some people seem to like that, I don't know. There he's spinning. It's a shark. It's a shark. I didn't spin my other camera around like I did the last time I came out here. Where's my hook, Mr. Shark? Where is the hook? Huh? I can't see it in the snow. Oh. Holy shit, it's way down there, Sharky. I'm coming in through your gill better for you. There you go. Shark. Goodbye, shark. Well, that was nice. I get a mini and get her set back up again. Pick her up. Okay. I did find an interesting perch video that was, I think he's a Canadian guy, but he's pretty informative about the time of the year, first ice, middle ice, end ice, how the perch react and feed differently, and that was very informative, I thought. I liked that. I found that this morning, watched that. I won't remember none of it, but that's what I found. Hmm. 
but and when I fish I just keep it real it's just me fishing I'm fortunate enough that I try to save as enough money in the summer and fall that I can take January and February off and so I can fish a lot but one thing I don't like is when it's slushy like this. Like it, tomorrow it's supposed to get up to, well down here at Rose Valley it's supposed to get up over 40 I think. But up home it's supposed to get like 38 or 37. All the lakes are just going to be slush and I don't like that at all. And then it's going to get real cold again over the weekend and next week so. I don't know if I'll even be going tomorrow. Nice day to go, it would be the best day. But I also got to change the oil and filter in my truck. And uh, this crazy Dodge, the brake switch, the brake switch broke again. That's the second one I put on it. And uh, if you leave it connected, the brake light stays on all the time. So. I felt that it's safer for everybody to uh, see my brake lights on all the time because it'll get behind me and go boy there's something wrong with that truck so I usually hook it up and let it stay on I ordered another switch and uh, if I take it off no I don't have no brake lights at all and I don't think that's good I'd rather have the brake lights on and have people think, boy, there's something wrong with that truck than to not have any brake lights on. So that's what I do. But I have to I also have to take it off when I get home or park the truck because they stay on all the time. They'll stay on all night. So I try to switch from auto zone. It lasted from auto zone to lows, which is about not even a mile. I put it in at AutoZone, it worked fine. I drove to Lowe's, shut the truck off, went into Lowe's. When I left Lowe's, I got up town, and I always know when the switch acted up because all of a sudden the brake pedal will be real hard to press, like, like the ABS or whatever, I don't know what it does, but it makes the brake pedal real hard, but only for one instant. And then, um, you know that it broke. So, that thing didn't even last a couple miles. So, I went to Napa, and I bought one at Napa. I put that in, that lasted three weeks, and that broke. So, I was reading the blogs, and the blogs all said, don't even try any aftermarket parts on those brake switches on these Mopars, these Rams. You gotta buy a genuine Mopar switch. They just don't work. And the only reason I think this switch broke is because I'm wearing my winter boots. I went out to Brian's, out to Punxsy on Saturday, and coming down the hill by 410, that's when the brake pedal got real hard, but I I think I hit the switch with my boot when I went to put the brake on. I think I smacked the switch. And uh, it's a really poor design on this thing. But the whole problem of it with this switch is I don't care about the brake light switch as much as it does the interlock um, to take it out of park when the switch goes bad you can't take the truck out of park you can't drive it also the cruise control is on there you know because when you touch your brakes it'll turn the cruise control off well this thinks you know that you're on your brakes all the time when the switch is broke so you have no more cruise control which I use all the time I don't drive on any road other than in town that I don't have my cruise control set. And uh, so I had to unhook it at Brian's before I left there. I unhooked it and drove all the way home. No cruise control. Three hour drive. A little over three hours. And when I got home I had to hook it back up. I mean I... I had to make sure the lights were off on the truck. So I 
I had to take the thing back off because I actually put the brake light switch back on when I stopped at sheets to get gas I put it back on and uh, that way it, I had a brake lights on all the time on the way home I thought that'd be the best bet when I got home I had to take it back off so the disconnect the wiring harness so the lights would be out all night so I've been driving it for three days now with <laughs> no no brake light switch <laughs> but, but I ordered one from Amazon and that's the last one I got was from there and it was a it's a genuine Mopar part that lasted what a year year and a half so I got a fish down there playing but I uh, went back down I had a fish come up and look at it I moved it, see? They don't like it, right? I don't know, they don't like it. So, I hope that comes. It's supposed to come. It says Wednesday, so we're supposed to get it tomorrow. And I'll put that back on. But I traced the wiring on a wiring diagram last night and I wrote everything down. And my plan is to actually either jump those wires I'm gonna cut the harness and I'm gonna hook the wires up that my brake lights work and my cruise control works but as far as I interlock I'm gonna take the wires right off the harness take them right out of that thing and either either wire nut them together or the one lead says it has to go to ground now and that's what makes it work when the terminal closes it grounds it or something I'm not sure but either way I'm gonna try to figure out what some way to put a wire onto a ground or not to a ground for my interlock to be disabled so I can put it from park in the drive anytime I want I won't have to touch the brake pedal you know I can just put it in you know I'm used to that because one of my trucks was at my Ford is either my Ford or my other Dakota Dodge I've had so many trucks but one of them you never had to touch the brake pedal to put it to shift it into drive you could just jump in and shift it and away you go I like that I don't know what difference it makes, but I always liked it because you could just jump in and go quick. So that's what I'm going to be working on tomorrow, I'm hoping, is putting that switch back in and oil change because it's going to be the nicest day and then it gets really cold. So I think tomorrow I probably won't fish because it's going to be slushy and bad. Uh, we'll see what happens. Another flag. in the middle. Gotta get a hook in the middle.
this is the third time this flag has went off. One fish. Tiamo time. Might as well wait for flags, huh? Another flag. <laughs> we'll see, it's the same one. <laughs> Always the same one. I don't know if you can see anything when I bring you out here or not. Got off. There's another little pickle. Yeah. I seen him down there. Looks like the same one I caught.